Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text this morning for our consideration is taken from the book of Deuteronomy. We read the sixth chapter and begin with the first verse. These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and demand, commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy a long life. Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commands that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large, flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Then you will eat and be, and be satisfied. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. This is God's word. Dear friends in Christ, more than likely at one time or another, every parent has had that frustration with their children, and maybe not so much with their children as with themselves. And the statement may get blurted out, I wish God gave me a manual as to how to be a proper parent and how to deal with this situation and that situation and, and what to do. I mean, they give you owner's manor, manuals when you buy a computer or a lawnmower or something like that, and you can read through and how to use it and how to do it correctly and how to care for it correctly and properly. Why not for children? And you go into some people's residence or homes, and you see home sweet home up there, and you think, uh, ours is far from a home sweet home. Our environment is not anything like that. And you'll see other little banners or things of the woodwork. Houses are built <coughs> with brick and stone. Homes are made of love alone. And, and you kind of anguish, I wish that could be the case in my home. I wish love could reign supreme there as well. God, in a sense, has given us that manual. He has given us that outline of instructions as to how to be a parent to our children. And I think, in a large part, that is what the Lord was trying to tell the Israelites as they are about to enter the promised land, that they were going to have a lot of good things. And you know as well as I do, we have a lot of good things, and when things come easily for us, it's very easy, and it's a very real temptation to abuse those things. And not only do they not be the things that draw us closer to God, but they are actually the things that draw us further away from Him. Satan would love nothing more than to undermine the Christian hope. And quite frankly, he's doing a very good job of it, unfortunately. It used to be we would call places, places of ill repute or places that you wouldn't want to go to or you're not going to go to that place and have it that establishment and so on and so forth. Now, unfortunately, we're bringing that into the home. There are wild parties, things on television that your grandparents would cringe to see that you were watching such filth and listening to such garbage. But it's right there in the home. Then you have the computers and everything on the computers. You can bring up almost anything you want. It's right there in the home. And not only that, there's a lot of arguing going on. The children are rebellious. You can't tell me what to do. I hate you. I don't want to be here anymore. I can't wait till I can move out of home and so on and so forth. And, and we get to our 
the place where we throw up our arms and hands and say, Lord, show me. And the Lord does. If we just take time to read and just take time to listen to him. I think we have to ask ourselves two key questions, parents. <laughs> One, do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul? Two, is your greatest desire that your child loves the Lord their God with all their heart, mind, and soul? Not caring what occupation, what income, whatever endeavors they wish to do. Is your chief concern that they love the Lord their God with all their heart, mind, and soul? And that's the premise that the Lord establishes this on. Here, O Israel, here, O people, the Lord, he is your Lord. The Lord, he is your God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Everything in life becomes easier when we understand the beginning. You know, scientists wrestle and they will until the day they die, until the next generation dies, and the next generation dies, wrestles with me all the creation and such like that. Because they don't know the beginning. You and I do. And so those things aren't big issues to us. But anything in life, if we know the beginning, we then very much know where the end will be too. Hear, O Lord. Hear, O Israel. Love the Lord your God. So it all starts with that. Love in the home. Do your children see love in the home. And not, I love that TV, or I love that team, or I love this, or I love that. Do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul? Do they see that? Do you feel it? If I'm doing one thing and telling my kids another thing, and I'm sitting there, I can't figure out what's going wrong. I don't know what's going on. Why are they not listening? And um, they don't see you doing it. They don't see you doing what the Lord has asked you to do. And more importantly, they, they don't see that it's important to you. There is a period of time where children, if I use the word, idolize their parents. You're the greatest thing in the world to them. So what's important to you is important to them. And they see that, and then that, that makes an impression. And they will continue in those ways. So how in the world, when God asks me to love him with all of my heart, mind, and soul, I am a sinful human being. I cannot possibly even begin to think that I could love the Lord my God with all my heart, mind, and soul. So how can I be a parent to impress that upon my children? God's also told us that. Hear. Listen. Listen to my voice. Hear me when I speak to you. You cannot hear the voice of the Lord if you are not in the Word and you are not listening to it. And the more we hear about the love of God for us, the more it compels our hearts to want to love him too. What I cannot do on my own, the Lord has first of all done for me, but he also empowers me to be able to do that as well. So first of all, it just starts by a simple thing. Listen to my word. Pay attention to it. It's difficult. When we come to God's house, how many have I, of you here this morning have I lost already in this sermon? Thinking about what you're going to be doing this afternoon or what lies ahead this week or what you just did this morning and things like that. And oh yeah, i got to pay attention to the pastor speaking now and I'm going to listen here. Um, it's difficult. Windows are open. Who's driving by? Oh, I wonder where that ambulance is going. Or, oh, there goes the police car. And, oh, what was that pastor just said? Not, not being critical. It's just it's our human nature. We are good listeners. 
But as the Lord encourages us and as we become better listeners and hearers, we begin to appreciate all the more the Lord has done for us. And then as we do that, we begin to live that. When your children are 50 or 60 years old, will they lament that? I never, I never saw mom or dad praying at home. I never saw them reading the Bible or having a devotion. I'm not trying to string along here a lot of law motivation. I'm not trying to give you guilt trips. But God does give us directions. He does give us guidance how we might serve him and how we might serve our family. It all begins with love for him. Love for our children and love for the belief that they will love the Lord as well. He says, talk about these things. Everything does not have to become a sermon. You're driving down the road, oh, there's Dad again, you know, going on about this. And, and No, you know, that doesn't, everything has to have to be a sermon. But there are times when it's so easy to draw an analogy what the Lord has done for us. Wow, this was the greatest trip ever. This was the greatest vacation ever. Wow. And, um, yeah, thanks to the Lord that he gave us this opportunity to do this. And thanks to the Lord that we had this time together. And, um, it's easy as that. We recognize that it wasn't just that because dad got a raise or mom got a raise, we had more money to do this. No, God gave you the opportunity. And so you begin to teach, and everything becomes a teaching opportunity for your children because you're imparting to them thoughts about what the Lord has done. Train them. Impress upon them. The, the word in the Hebrew there is, is really something that is, is making a penetration. You're, you're poking through something. You're penetrating through something. Um, penetrate. Impress upon them. Let, let, it, let it be something that they see what the Lord is doing. And then and train them. An, another one of those mysteries of life. It doesn't have to be a mystery of life. Let's see. These three children all came from mom and dad. This one has a completely different attitude than this one. This one has a completely different attitude than this one. And this one doesn't have anything like the attitude of these three. Where did this one come from? And we are marvel at that. And we think, wow. And so one is so sensitive. And I just look at them and they're fearful of something. And the other is so defiant that it doesn't matter what I do. Have you ever thought that God makes us each different for a specific reason and a specific purpose in life? That he has already, from creation, known what that was going to be? And so as parents, we learn to appreciate the various gifts that God has given to our children. When you don't get A's like your brother or sister does, we're not all on the same level. God gifted us in different ways. We aren't going to all bring home A's in a report card. We aren't going to all be able to throw a baseball 95 miles an hour. We aren't all going to be able to, you know, be able to do various things. But we all can do some things. And as a parent, we learn to appreciate the various gifts that our children have. And we appreciate the fact that they're sinners just like I am. And we realize that there are times I have to be firm with them. There are times I have to discipline. There are times I need to praise and to compliment and build up. It's all what the Lord is saying here. Impress these things upon your children. Train them. Show them. I'm spending all my time at work or in my leisure hardly any time with my children. I just don't understand why they don't listen to me. I don't understand why they don't do this. Spend time with them. Train them. Encourage them. Be there for them. What the Lord is saying there. These things that I've commanded you, write them on your wrist, write them on your 
that right on your door frame. <laughs> and they took that literally, and so they had these things that they attached to their wrist, and they had probably things written on the door post. But yeah, are we any different? Uh, we may not have them there, but we wear a cross, and maybe we have something that, you know, a shirt that has a, a slogan on or something of you know, some religious nature on our refrigerator. You probably have some Bible passages or some scriptural truths that, with a pretty picture that goes along with it. What do those things do? They remind us. They remind us who we are and who we serve. They remind us of how much God loves us and what he did for us and for our salvation. He laid down his life. I think the Lord is also trying to tell us, too, it's much easier to train a child than it is to repair an adult. When we train them and we encourage our children when they are young and we teach them about their Lord and their Savior, Jesus Christ, those are the things that leave lasting impressions. They will perhaps wander from the way. They will get off track. Satan's also trying to rob them of the hope that they have. But what precious opportunity he gives to us as parents to be able to do that. So the Lord is saying, now as you're about to go into a very wonderful land, a land that I'm giving to you is going to be flowing with milk and honey, and there's going to have everything you could ever have dreamed of. Don't forget me. And I guess as we think of a family today, by all means, don't forget the Lord your God. Don't forget that the sole purpose of your being here on earth is to be his servant, to sing praises to his name, and to serve him in all that you do. And as a parent, that is my sole purpose, that is your sole purpose. Train your children, first of all, in the fear and love of God. Show them. Show them by your example. Feed them by what you are doing and what you are saying. Let them know that this is the most important thing in your life. And then as we love our Lord, love them. You know, the majority of this sermon is deal, dealing with and directed to parents, and, and should rightly be so, but for your children, it's the same for you. Recognize your parents as a gift given to you from God. You did not select them. God chose them for you. And whenever you become rebellious in heart and spirit against your parents, you're rebellious against God. God says, love them with all your heart, mind, and soul. Receive their rebuke and their admonition when it is necessary. Serve them. We all have roles. Nothing is more grating to me than a child will say to his parent, I don't have to listen to you. Love the Lord your God. Replace that attitude with a love for God. And what a difference that will make. God blesses those home. God blesses that attitude. God blesses that faithfulness to him. Because he has been faithful to us. He's never let us down. And so we learn to grow together, but it all starts. It all starts. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And so I go back to where we began. What are the two key questions? Do I love the Lord my God? with all my heart, mind, and soul, and do I want as a chief concern for my children and my family that they love the Lord their God with all their heart, mind, and soul. Amen.